Hello, Internet. My name is Camomile. And I'm Requiem. And uh, we are right about to get into the Mother of Mothers. I was hoping to time this on exactly our entry, just for maximum thematic cohesion. But, uh, you know, it's an improvised show. It doesn't always work out that way. But Are those the old women you're fighting hags? They look like hags. I mean, possibly, but if so, they are wimpy little hags. I feel like we have some guest hosts might, who might be upset. I mean, how many more can there possibly be? <laughs> it's fine. I'm pretty right. sure we have almost found our way out of the hell that is Arkansas. <laughs> I just got to stay off the hag's radar for... I mean, probably another week or two, but uh, I'm going to say out of, we're almost at your house to get whatever <laughs> mysterious treasure it is you've come back for. Yeah, yeah. This ends up being, you know, some cursed birthday gift for me. Then I guess the curse will have come true before I even received it. I promise you it is not a cursed birthday gift for you. I feel like that means it has to be something worse. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Let's talk about hags. Uh, standard D&D, &D, you've got your green hag, your sea hag, your anise hag, your night hag. <coughs> I think uh, they added a Kalia hag to 5e. Uh, storm hag seems like a good idea. But at that point, I think you're trying to, like, that's probably all the hags you need. Right? Are there any other hags you can think of? What? <laughs> I feel like swamp hag, like that's the thing, but that's basically just a green hag or a anise hag, though. And like a river hag would just be a sea hag, like like you don't need a you don't need a separate river hag for mega muckle bones. Uh, yeah, you've already got a water hag. But if you're feeling hagged out, I guess we could talk about something else. What is that? <laughs> I actually forget its name. You know, none of these enemies are really... Like, they have names if you go into the lore and stuff, but they don't have little name tags floating above them or anything. Anyway, I killed the thing that was blocking this guy's pilgrimage. It wasn't that hard, man. <laughs> I mean, in his defense, he is all tied up. It's true, but like, it seems like it's his fault. <laughs> I wonder if these people are all feeling guilty about specific things they've done, or if they've just got an uh, original sin thing going on. Don't know. Oh, a big toe made of limestone. Yeah, he's given us toes made of limestone one by one every time we helped him out. Oh. They're not great power-ups, though, so I don't usually bother wearing them. Oh. But as we have entered the Mother of Mothers, I feel like now would be a fun time to do something we've talked about doing off-camera before. Why don't we, uh, since we talked about... How how to do pantheons well a couple of times now. Why don't we make a pantheon for D&D &D from scratch right now? All right. So, uh, the basic elements of a good pantheon, I'm going to boil it down to three because the rule of three is my waifu. Firstly, a good pantheon, the gods have relations with each other. Um, we are specifically doing a D&D &D pantheon I guess I should back up and say there are other good ways to do pantheons. But for purposes of D&D, &D, um, the gods should have relationship with each other. They should be an interconnected uh, social group, I guess. Uh, number two, there should be a god for every major aspect of life in the setting. 
Um, which part of that means that every class should have an obvious god who is their patron. And uh, number three, celestials, fiends, and aberrations. Uh, not necessarily aberrations, actually, but fey is the one I'm thinking of. Gotta come from somewhere. So, do you have any god ideas to get us started? Uh, let's see. Because we don't have any particular starting point, then the obvious thing to ask ourselves that this is intended for D&D &D is the premise. Which means... Uh, what I think for this situation is... Sorry. Well, it's just uh, the, 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 the obvious starting point if we don't have another idea to work with. And if we do have another idea to work with, we can come back to this later and possibly not even do this at all. This is not by no means a prerequisite. But uh, the obvious starting point is to ask yourself, who is the god of the clerics? Because as we have mentioned, right. the priest of every god doesn't have to be a cleric. But clerics do need a god that's woven too deep into their uh, into their mechanics. If you're going to have clerics not have gods, you have to rewrite them completely, which is beyond the scope of this project. Yes. Now, the cleric is your very uh, christian uh standard. Any uh, god that is associated with the cleric is going to come off a little like... It's going to seem like Yahweh, pretty much, no matter what you do. D&D uh, &D religion has this weird hybridism of where it's very medieval Europe, but it's also... <coughs> drawing a lot from pre-Christian polytheism. Uh you can try to obfuscate that a little, which I think is, you know, on the one hand, like, like probably you want something that's going to be your Crystal Dragon Jesus, because if you don't, people are going to turn one of your odds into the Crystal Dragon Jesus anyways. Right. I do think you don't want it to be, like, this is very clearly Yahweh, so not having it be an old bearded guy, or, like, an ethereal force of light is probably good. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 no. If you're going to have a Crystal Dragon Jesus, then make it, like, you know, a Crystal Dragon or something. Which I would suggest, except it's already been kind of done twice in both Elder Scrolls and Mainline D and D with uh, Akatosh and Bahamut, just having it be a dragon of some sort. So yeah. probably not that. Uh, that is entirely fair, and I would now agree one thing that uh, if you are attempting to make a D and D pantheon that feels very especially D and D then I do think that having Bahamut be your big, shiny crystal dragon Jesus is a very defensible thing to have, you know, the the default good god of the clerics be your dragon god, because Dungeons and & Dragons, and dragons feature heavily. However, uh, let's go ahead and stretch our creativity a little bit. We're on camera, <laughs> so if nothing else, you know, uh, while a more generic thing would probably be better for... Uh, if we were to do an actual play, in that it would allow our audience to quickly catch up on who the gods were, so we wouldn't have to, you know, give them a pamphlet or whatever, for a podcast that is specifically, like, about designing gods. Yeah, let's, uh, let's be a little bit more creative. Let's really show what you can do with this. No, I'm probably being partially inspired by the, uh... Catholic imagery that we've uh, been absorbing the past couple of weeks, but one thing that uh, occurs to me that you could do is do something, rather than it sort of looks like Yahweh, do something that more looks like the Virgin Mary, like some sort of holy mother of wisdom, and she's got, like, like her servitors are these very, like, you know, priestly clerics in armor, but she herself is this very, like, motherly holy figure, sort of like the iconic, like, the figure of the mother and child has been in polythe in religion since, like, Back into the Sumerian times, with uh, you see some of the images of uh, you know the mother and child, like uh, I want to say it's Ishtar and Tammuz, uh, Aphrodite and Adonis. Uh, uh, there's all sorts of mother-child images. So I think having the your standard crystal dragon, Je your crystal dragon Jesus, being some sort of holy mother of wisdom, who uh, you fight in her honor and defense as a priest or paladin could be an interesting twist i like that that is a good start um want to uh, do me a favor seeing as how you've wriggled out of the knots anyway and 
managed to go at least 15 minutes without immediately wandering away, which is a good start. Uh, but do you want to look up on the crystal ball what the existing domains of... You're not an enemy. It's a good thing you can't take damage. <laughs> 5e domains? Yes, 5e domains. Uh, one thing you have to do when you're making a pantheon for D&D, every player option has to be available unless you have some specific reason for excluding one of them. But uh, you should never be excluding a domain simply because you never bother to think of a god for it. Right. In the meantime, I'm going to make a chart just so we have, I can reference stuff easily while we're doing this. So Deity 1 is going to be uh, Mother of Wisdom, I guess I will call her. for the, since Coining yeah. names is always a little difficult. Yeah, it's, always, hard. Gonna... it's always the last thing you, that you do. So we're not going to even bother doing it here. Um, there is some possibility that, uh, you know, I will write this up, probably not into like a full source book, but uh, into a little quickie, you know, five page long uh, just reference online, you know, purely digital online reference thing. And if I do that, then I will come up with names for them. But uh, we're not doing that right now because we are literally doing this on the spot. That's the gimmick. And names take forever, so uh, if we thought up names for them, then 80% of this would be just us trying to, you know, trying out different syllables and seeing if they sound right. And at the end of it, we would have two gods. <laughs> so looking at the uh, <coughs> looking at the uh, domain list, it looks like peace, light, and life all look like they fit what we've described with the Mother of Wisdom. And she covers uh, clerics and paladins. So light is very fire-centric in its actual abilities. It is. So, so maybe just peace of life. Yeah. Uh, life is the main one you got to cover. That is, you know, the the cleric -y cleric. You know, the life domain is the one who gets bonus healing. And so that is, uh, you know, the, the, the cleric of healing, which is the standard image of the cleric. And the Mother of Wisdom is trying to cover the standard cleric anyways. Yeah, that is... Her main shtick is being the cleric and paladin. So we've got the Mother of Wisdom. Uh, you know, I think uh, it would be interesting, uh, since we want these children, these gods share relationships with each other, the Mother of Wisdom has a child who is estranged from her that she has lost and is, she's an eternal mourning for. I don't know necessarily, like the obvious thing would obviously be a god of darkness, but that is sort of like, that's a little too obvious, so. Yeah, no, I was, because I was thinking that you know, maybe are some kind of war or death god, but uh, I think what would be more interesting is this, I have messed this up, I need to reset this room. I think it would be more interesting if this is... You should be able to obviously see a family resemblance while at the same time having there be an obvious source of conflict. Like, uh, they have a clear similarity to one another. They're not opposites. But uh, they are nevertheless are opposed to one another in some obvious way where you can see how they became estranged. So, definitely what like are... the estranged child aspect, but what should her this uh, deity's associations be? Oh my god, what we got to think of the hard way. <laughs> All right. Well. What might a mother of peace? Yeah, she and could be really... actually. What what, what what would we associate with it? Let's just you know randomly throw out some brainstorm, some random uh, things like light. In now the this could sense be of uh, light. this could be uh, her uh, estranged child is the god of death because they're the first uh, thing that died. Uh, the mother of wisdom, eternal mourning for her lost child. Uh, uh, 
but the then you get sort of a Izanami or a Persephone thing. Except this time, instead of like where Izanami and Persephone were trapped in the underworlds, uh, the child doesn't isn't trapped. The child refuses to return, and because they refuse to return, that is why death exists in the world. What is the child's perspective in this case? Uh... You know what? I've had an idea. Ooh. So, you know, the domain of light is very fire centric. So, but we uh, took that out of. Uh, with Mother was yes, that we. Stated. Exactly. Uh, she doesn't have that domain. Um, I am proposing the child has this domain. Oh. Because it is very fire centric, it is very aggressive. The, uh, the Mother of Wisdom is comparatively more pa uh, passive. She is. I don't want to. I don't want to over-exaggerate her passivity, you know, she is by no means a do-nothing god, but uh, she is not a very smitey sort of god. Uh, I can see, so the estranged child is, I don't know if it is the first mortal died, or perhaps the estranged child has a... Hmm. You can tell I'm, I'm I'm having ideas as we're talking about it, which is making my train of thought very hard to follow. I apologize. Normally, you know, I've thought about these things for a while in advance, and so you know, even though I might not be uh, have the exact words to communicate it, I do at least have a complete thought in my head when I start talking about it here. Whereas now, yeah, new things are occurring to me as I speak. So. So perhaps a, a pair of brothers. All right. They are both the children of the Mother of Wisdom. The older child... Uh, I say brothers. They could actually be brother or sister. And brother-sister pairs are nice and mythical. Uh, but the older child... is... Uh, has died. And becomes... The Lord of the Dead, I don't know how exactly, but I do like that idea. But, you know, there has to be some kind of reason behind that why they, uh... Became... I think, like, the, the first... They're the first person to die. So the domain of death comes into existence because of their death. So they're sort of naturally the Lord of Death. Now, what's, what's missing here, we'll have to figure this out, is uh, some kind of reason for uh, the child to have died. And uh, so I'm thinking that the, the child of light, of light and fire, is uh, angry about this. Uh, he's basically, you know, angry at their sibling's death and seeks to like, you know, reverse it or prevent it from ever happening again. Uh, you know, they they have a vendetta with death. Um, like I'm trying to figure out why this would be exactly. You know, there needs to be some kind of philosophical justification. Um, either philosophical well, is, or situational justification. But uh, the Mother of Wisdom, for whatever reason, uh, has basically decided that this has to be that, uh, you know, the, the, the one child has to remain dead. Um, that can either be because perhaps they chose death. That sounds kind of macabre. But they are the Lord of the Dead. Uh, in fairness, like, they are not in any meaningful way dead. <laughs> but, you know, like, uh, ultimately what I'm getting at here is that uh, the, the Mother of Wisdom ultimately accepts and makes peace with the death of her elder child because she d does not think it would be wise for whatever reason to try and reverse it. And the younger child, the uh, light god, the light and fire god, does not 
agree with that assessment is, you know, wants to bring their sibling back and also wants to restore all of the dead back to life. They are a, a more aggressive but also more short-sighted god, and I mean, there has to be a reason why this is a short-sighted goal, but we haven't figured out yet, but, uh... Well, the thing is, because we are also... We might come back and revise and tweak stuff, because you should yeah. not just have every god be sort of atomistic. So we might come up with stuff as we go along that changes this. Uh, right. Let's, uh... I'm not sure we have it yet with those two, so let's see if we can... Let's go back to the class list, see, uh... We've got, our, we've got our cleric and paladin god. Like, uh, I like those three all together. Like, I like their family dynamic that they have. But I definitely feel like there are pieces missing to really bring it together. Uh, so yeah, by all means, let's go back to the class list, see if we can figure out some other pieces of this puzzle. Right, so we've got the cleric and paladin. Uh... Uh, you know, Barbarian, Wither, Sorcerer, uh, Druid. Uh. Now, the Wizard and the Sorcerer uh, do not necessarily need gods. If you want to have an Arcane Divine div divine Divide, uh, I mean, you have an Arcane Divine Divide. You, that, that That's a thing. Um, but uh, you could emphasize that divide by saying that, yes, uh, Wizards do not have gods. They are... Uh, if not necessarily atheist, right? I mean, they obviously can't be purely atheist in the sense that the gods clearly exist, so they can't be literally atheist. Uh, except as, like, a joke. But uh, you could have, you know, the whole point of the wizard class be uh, they do not depend on gods for their power. Um, and yeah, when I say wizard class no. sorcerer or god, I really mean, like, a god associated with magic, which does not necessarily have to be, which should not be a big wizard, unless it's like, well, they're, just, they're just the big, unless the whole thing is like they were ascended human who ascended through magic. Like, it could be some sort of this anthropomorphized idea of magic, even if wizards are mostly not worshipping them. Yeah, well, what I'm getting at here, though, is that there's actually, we could specifically not have a god of magic and have magic be the way to power that is independent of gods. Uh, right. That, that's a specific idea that I came up with off the top of my head. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea we should go with, but it's just an option that occurred to me. Um. Uh, especially because wizards are, and so are druids for that matter, in many ways, a competitor to clerics. So uh, it would make sense for there to be, you know, for, for wizards to be opposed to gods entirely. Um, right, not in the sense that literally every wizard has to be, but just in the sense that the class equips them to be. Um, it would also make sense, however, if the patron god of the wizards... That is a tricky part of that level. If the patron god of the wizards uh, was part... was the leader of some rival faction of gods, contrast to the patron god of clerics. And then I... You can also have uh, a patron god of druids who would uh, almost certainly have to be some kind of nature god just given the flavor of the class. <laughs> there. Gotcha, you little bastards. Uh, but yeah, the druid would also make sense as a rival to the Mother of Wisdom. Or, failing that, you could have the druid and uh, wizard and cleric gods all be... Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, you could have all of them be... Wait, what the hell? That's the world's most useless shortcut. It's bugged out. Of 
Great. Well, now we're back here. <laughs> it's fine. We'll just keep going with what we're doing. Uh, you could, instead of having them be rivals, you could also have them be a trio. You know, who have uh, some kind of friendly association with each other. Either way, though, I feel strongly that whoever these three are... Well, not that strongly. Uh, as strong as I feel about any of this stuff. So, you know, a medium sort of strength, as opposed to the very weak strength I have towards all the other ideas. I feel like those three, the arcane, divine, and primal gods, should be big ones. Those are probably what we are going to build a pantheon out of. Let's And let's do what we did with the Mother of Wisdom and go back to a class. Let's start talking about the druid and what you can do with druid gods. I think the obvious way to go, and which, again, since it's the obvious way, probably what, not what we'll do, is the druid is some sort of Earth Mother. Uh, right. If we did do um, an Earth Mother, then it feels like the, the god of magic then would have to also be some kind of mother figure, and we could have, like, three mothers. Yeah. Because if we are going with three mothers, then uh, it would make, you know... Uh, it would be kind of cliched uh, to have the druid one be the Earth Mother, but it fits in well, and that is kind of an interesting idea, but do you have another idea for a druid god? Uh, you know, and one thing you can do is uh, have a god that is not anthropomorphic at all, uh, like some sort of uh, world tree figure. Uh, you could have, if you want it to be sort of like some sort of outsider figure, uh, some sort of like moon god, like the Thousand Face Moon. Uh... Um, what about you? Do you have any ideas for a druid? Uh, you've got all sorts a... of mythological figures to pull from. The Dogda, uh, Geb, Gaia, uh, Cernunos, uh, Artemis. There's different ways to do this. Uh, you could go with a sun god of some kind. That one is often a shoe in for your healing god, like Pelor, for example, but we're not doing it that way, so... God damn it. But yeah, since we're not doing it that way, we could have a sun god, because druids do have a lot of uh, light spells. Moonlight initially, but the sunlight is the more powerful version. Yeah, that does potentially get into the area you might be a little bit uh, Galarian with it, where you're trying to subvert it too much. Like, sun god is not what people think of when they think of... Uh, You want to be able... So if, you had, if you're doing Stein, like you're actually probably doing the, the God of the Seasons. That could also work. Which is a little uh, bit like... Uh, I mean, the main thing with the Sun is that I want to reconcile the fact that... Uh, uh, one of the clerics... Or one of the Druid's most powerful attacks is a devastating satellite laser that comes from the Sun. Which... It's like a 6 level spell, so it's usually about the highest spell level you'll get to in an average game of 5e, since there's relatively little content available at higher levels than that. Um... Having a Seasons God could also work, though. Particularly, uh, Druids also get elemental stuff in D&D. &D. And uh, the Seasons map fairly easily to the elements, so... Do we want to go with the Seasons God for that? I'm... And that's right, this thing's to... The world's worst shortcut. I'm thinking I had an objective in my, objection in my mind 
it was an issue, and I cannot remember what it was, but I think it was an important one that just has vanished from my mind. Um, well, let's ask, how do the Fae fit in with this potential season's god, who, on account of mysterious objection, uh, we may or may not have a, uh, we may or may not want to keep this one, if you can remember your objection and we're not able to resolve it. But, right. Uh, what are the fate of this god? I think fate or nature spirits, like, so you don't do... Hmm. Like creations, children... Uh, just friends and allies. Is the... You don't want your outside, your various outsider types, and I'm going to include Faye in that to be like this separate hierarchy, unless there's like some point to it. Yeah. So like uh, angels are obviously servitors of the uh, Mother of Wisdom. Uh, so whatever your druid god is, the Faye are in relationship. Right. Uh, to them somehow. Yes, so, you know, are the... Yeah, you know, the, the Fae could be creations of the Druid God, children of the Druid God. They could be... The Druid God could simply be the greatest of them. Um, you know, they could share an origin, and if they are the greatest of them, then we could figure out what that origin is later. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do like the idea that... Uh, they do share an origin somehow, though. Whatever it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the druid god is just the greatest of the fae. So, the prior, yeah, so the druid god is the orderer of seasons. Uh, she's sort of like, I guess, like, a little bit like Demeter or Persephone, that she has her different aspects that she takes. Uh, you could uh, potentially even do a mother maiden crone thing that each season, though that does leave out what is, is it, was she just dead in winter or what? <laughs> uh, that would work. Every time I get smacked around by something in this, I'm, I always just think to myself, God damn it, this is exactly like something I would do to my players. So the Keeper of Seasons, I'm going to call her. So you know what? Uh, since we are sort of gravitating towards... Uh, she's not like a great mother exactly, but we are gravitating towards a... Uh, a female... Druid God. I like the idea of the three mothers as our three major goddesses um, representing divine, arcane, and primal power sources. Um, I wonder here is an idea and uh, this is something that could we could just just throwing out there is that actually the keeper of seasons is the daughter of the mother of wisdom and her death is sort of the creation of the mortal world and the reason she stays dead quote unquote is because that is what keeps the mortal world in existence ah that would mean that the god of light is trying to burn the mortal world away <laughs> let me pull up so the Keeper of Seasons gets nature, obviously, and uh, life also, I guess. Though her priests are primarily druids. Right. Indeed, I think it would be perfectly justifiable for virtually any D&D &D setting, right? Like, we're trying to avoid um, stripping Claire... Uh, uh, stripping away class features as much as possible, player options. That's the phrase I'm looking for. So we don't want to, uh, you know, we want to have every domain represented. 
However, I think there is an argument to be made, even for a generic D&D setting, that there should be no nature domain, because that's what a druid is. Yeah. I want to play a nature, nature cleric. All right, so there's this class called the druid that you want to play. <laughs> right. So the last of our three, the arcane one, I think you would associate with the darkness of night. And not only is she associated with the magic, but she's like, I hate to use, like, I'll think of a different title for her, but like, she's the mother of mysteries. So like things that like, like rogues are also going to invoke her name when they're going to do a heist or something, or even adventures in general. Like she is associated with the darkness and possibility and sort of the infinite uh, void of the, of the night sky. Uh, I like that. Uh, I also like her as being more of a, a more stoic and reserved god as compared to the other two. I think we'll call her the Lady of Night. Uh, and her priests are wizards and rogues, but like if you give her domains, uh, arcana and trickery, I guess. Or uh, Twilight? Is that... Twilight, I don't know much about. Uh, it might be in Tasha's, which I haven't seen it's much in of. Tasha's. Just came out. So yeah, it's in Tasha's. Tasha's domains, I haven't seen much of. They just came out. None of my players have used them yet, so... Uh... Trickery, I feel like, you know, we, we gotta have someone, you know, that in there somewhere, and this is a fairly straightforward place to put it. Although... Yeah, yeah, no, because I'm thinking about trickery, and it's it's a lot of illusions. It's a lot of, like, this is definitely not a mischievous god, I don't feel like. Um, but as a god of mysteries, I feel like the trickery power set still fits her. So trickery and arcana? Yeah. I mean, arcana is another one of those things where, like, you're trying to play a wizard, play a wizard. Play a wizard with a patron deity, that's fine. fun friends that I'm grappling with real quick, but, uh... <laughs> there we are. Finally. You do have finite health. Good to know. If I remember the layout of this place correctly, I am heading towards the boss who is the hardest boss in the Mother of Mothers unless you cheese him, in which case he is the easiest boss, and we're totally gonna cheese him. That's an herb, isn't it? I should go drop that off before I fight him. Otherwise, people will die. <laughs> the executions are fun. I think there's a way back towards Albero in this way. Ah, yes. I remember this place. God, is it annoying. See, I made fun of this boss for being pretty easy, but that's in a room without scythe traps in it. The thing will not die until yeah, I, mean, I see it dies. Got a decent chunk of HP. Its attack pattern is pretty easy to duck under in a vacuum, but uh, when you got all these traps hanging overhead, it gets a little bit trickier.
So I'm going to uh, Kiev eventually. I can't remember what this is for, but. And yep, gonna need one of those eventually too, but I can't afford it. Don't need that so much because I'm gonna cheese the boss it's for. <laughs> That was close. Yeah. Uh, I think at some point they realized that seeing as how this is actually supposed to be a shortcut. Um, having it be extremely difficult to traverse might not be the best idea. <laughs> so they give you little second chance platforms. You do have to be pretty spry on them though because they will absolutely kill you if you... Uh, Let's open up the shortcut before we go into here because this place might kill me. I forget how you get that thing. <laughs> 